Titus with Redman Richardson, and this is Straight, Straight Up. Up. Back again at For the Culture. Shout out For the Culture for the beautiful ambiance we have with us. Rez, would you like to introduce our guest? Yes, today we have one of the hottest, one of the best, one of the greats that has a voice through his heart. So we have uh, a great artist today. He's from Fort Worth. He's going to tell us about his art, uh, his passion, uh, the things he stands up for, and more. So everybody, welcome to the stage. One Velasquez. Cute audio applause. Hey, Roy, did I say your last name right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had to get it right, man. I had to get it right. All right, so first thing, first one, I know the people are looking at your beautiful paintings. So can you explain each one? To yeah, the so the one in the front, um, that's actually a self-portrait. It's 30 inches by 30 inches oil on canvas. And, um, you know, I do a lot of graffiti. So I kind of wanted to capture the movement of graffiti because I think that's art itself, um, you know. So um, actually, my one of my favorite self portraits. Usually, I don't. Our artists don't like their self portraits, but I like that one. <laughs> there you go. You gotta like yourself. <laughs> and then the one in the back, uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, rhino from the uh, Fort Worth Zoo. Oh, I went cool. I went there and posted up by the um, you know exhibit, and I just painted it. Have you Have you been to the Dallas Zoo? Uh, no, uh, no I didn't. Worth it. It's not worth it. Not if you went to the Fort Worth, so you don't want it. Well, it's like going the, back. The, the Fort Worth Zoo, I heard, the doesn't have a big aquarium, and I heard the Dallas one does. Oh, it do. And I like fish, so oh, I wouldn't want it to go. But then by the time I got into going to uh, uh, the zoos, uh, then Corona happened. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, people don't know, that's really uh, an important piece. Uh, just researching you, uh, you had an interview on that piece, correct? One, is yeah, one yeah, 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 yeah. I took that with me to... Uh, uh, Good morning, Texas. Good morning, yeah, Texas. Good morning, Texas. Good, good, good. All right, so Juan, can you tell the people like where are you from and like just how all this started? Well, um, I uh, I was born in Mexico. I've uh, been in Fort Worth for twenty three years. Ooh. So I consider myself from Fort Worth. You know, um, funky town. Funky town, you know. I love Dallas, you know. I always do. I don't ever think it's a competition, but you know, you gotta be proud of where you where, where home is, you know. <laughs> friendly competition. It's a, yeah, it's friendly friendly competition. competition. It's got us on the zoo, though. At least I got us on the zoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, you know, like all the protests, you know, you mess with us, we we'll all come together. There you no, go. And speaking of protests, um, you know, everything that's been going on with the you know Black Lives Matter and uh, just the, the injustice that's been going on with the police brutality in the police system um can you talk about one of the first murals i seen of you was the hands that said love to tell can, them what happened and, and can you tell us the the meaning behind that one and your inspiration of doing it I also tell them what happened to the mural too yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so you know um i've um i grew up in a small town where like um I don't know, like, I guess we just grew up, like, sheltered from the world, but there's a lot of mixed races in my town. Close-knit. Yeah, so we, like, race, I never even thought about race until I got to high school, mm. where then they're like, hey, you got to go over there. Mm. And, and I'm like, why? This is my friend. I grew up with him, you know, like, I grew up with him, you know, um, my entire life. They're like, well, no, he, you know, he needs to go over there. You need to go over there. That's kind of how it works. So it's something that I didn't even think about until I actually got to high school. And, you know, just, uh, you know, especially in the army too, you know, in the army, we're all closed. You know, we don't, it's, it's, it's not, there's not that much, I mean, there is racism in the army, there is, but it's not as much as like in the civilian world. Everybody's kind of like family, you know, it's like you don't, you know, it's like you're just brothers. It's not like so, you know, and I have a lot of mixed family in my in, uh, in my family. You know, so I I don't. To me, race is a uh, one of those things that makes me mad because then it's like it's like we're all the human race. So why why are, you know it's like why you know I guess I it just it's something that just makes me angry when people are racist against people just because it's like I I just. It's, I see it as ignorance. Yeah, you know, exactly, ignorance, exactly what it is. ignorance, and it's people wanting to make them feel better about themselves by putting somebody else down. Yeah. So when I heard about the, you know, everything was going on, 
actually I had just gone back from the military in October. Mm. So I haven't really been here for, for, for a while. Mm. Uh, and then I had, I had a really bad wreck. Oh, um, in October, you know, I had a lot of bad, uh, you know, luck. So about, you know, when all this, uh, stuff happening, you know, uh, black lives matter movement and stuff like that, I knew I wanted to do something, especially with art because, you know, art is powerful, but I didn't want like to ignite more fire and just make it worse and, and be about hate, you know? So I, I thought, you know, what can I do that, you know, it's like, that it's more of like, hey, what's the answer? So I thought about doing, uh, you know, black hand and a white hand holding together because I always thought that like uh, love is the answer. You know, if, you know, if you just treat it, if we just, if we, everybody just treated everybody the way they wanted to be treated, like we wouldn't have all the issues that we have. Even cops, right? Like, like cops, when it's a family, when they know it's like a family member of a different cop, they treat them differently yeah. because yeah. it's like, to them, their family, cops feel like they're in a close group. So it's like they treat them the way they would want the other cop to treat their family, but they don't treat other people that way. So if we just treat everybody the way you want to be treated or the way you would want someone to treat your family. You know, we wouldn't be in a lot of the situations that we're in. So yeah, I decided to paint that mural. Uh, it got covered over. Somebody went and scribbled all over it, which Man. is fine. Oh, well, your mural represents unity. Yeah, yeah. They, they that's went, what's crazy. They went and scribbled over it. Uh, so then I had a friend that was like, hey man, uh, I went to the five yard and I saw it, so I, he fixed it. Mm -hmm. So then somebody went and scribbled over it again. So then I had another friend go fix it. And then finally somebody just went and painted over it. So then I had an opportunity to do one outside of the, for the culture studio. Shout out for the culture. Yeah, so I did one that's permanent here and that one says love. And it has a black hand and a white hand holding hands. And, um, yeah, and um, I'm actually doing another one uh, here this weekend in Fort Worth. Massive mural, probably gonna be uh, like maybe I would say like 80 feet wide. Oh, you know, 20 feet tall, and it's it's gonna say in big words, "Black Lives Matter." So, Ooh. so that okay. one, I'm pretty excited about that one, um, especially because like. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff on the news where um, I had yeah, I had this conversation with somebody the other day when I was telling them like, you know, I feel like they're trying to divide us. Yep, I feel you know, the same they, way. They're telling people like, hey, blacks are attacking Mexicans. Mexicans are attacking blacks. Why? Because um, they see that, you know, we're strong together. They connection. We're strong together. Strong oh my God. So I I call my friends. They're, they're, so they were doing this, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter uh, event. And, uh, you know, I call up my friends and I say, hey, man, when we did the Vanessa thing, I saw a lot of, uh, you know, the black community out there supporting us. So I, I told them, I was like, y'all better get over there and support them because mm -hmm. I'm going to be there because I, I don't, you know, they're trying to divide us. And it's like, it's not cool. So I, you know, I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to show up. I showed up late because I had to work. But then I was like, uh, you know, even if I'm just there, yeah, you I, want them, I want people to see like, look, you know, it's like we got your back. You yes. know what I mean? And um, because I'm telling you, uh, together we're strong. And the moment we united, started processing together, what happened? The media. It was all over media. All over media. Never seen it before. None of those videos were verified. We didn't even know if they were old. They could have been 10 years old. But they flooded the media with it. Why? You it, tell me. It's the media. Like, everything is about the media. They try to, you know, break us up. And I'm glad you said that because in our eyes, you know, as a as a black person, as a Hispanic, uh, we don't see race. Yeah. We just see each other for who we are. Character, personality. Yeah. You know, that's it. So I don't want to say, you know, it'd be the other race that's trying to be powerful and things like that. But if you look at the, the census uh, uh, and the numbers, one of the main reasons I think Trump became president is because uh, Trump, first, right? first he don't care, and second, the second thing is he was talking about building this this wall, but he know uh, in 2050, 2051, uh, Hispanics will be the biggest population. Uh, population in the United States. So I, I think they look at stuff like that. They plan for the future, but it takes us coming together, talking, having a conversation, and using our powers, using our creativity, our talent, our strengths and uh, trying to fight back. 
So I, I thank you so much for, you know, making that mural. Uh, we went to the fabrication yard when it was still there, the ends screw over, and I just fell in love with it, like, yeah. truly. So uh, speaking on the Vanessa, can you tell us, um, I know you're part of the military, you active, but what is another reason that like felt, felt uh, warm in your heart to do that mural? Well, because, um, you know, like I have a daughter too, you know, I have a daughter too, and you know, um, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's like when you, when your kids look back at history, you want them to be proud of that you stood up for the right and the right, and you know, for the right reasons. You know, I, uh, you know, it's um, it's something that like we should all, if you know, we all have moms, so you know, you know, most of us have sisters. Some of us will have daughters, but you know, like when you stand up for um, against uh, you know sexual harassment against uh, one woman, you're kind of it's that's what a lot of people don't understand that you know people say like you know why why does so many other cases are there but only a few of them get attention? Mm. You know, it's true that does happen a lot. But the thing is that if all the cases got attention then it would almost like go in one ear and the other because yeah. it would be everywhere. So, and when one case gets attention, it's not because of that person. That person represents a movement. Mm -hmm. You know, it represents a movement. And sometimes you need a movement for change to happen. So, yeah, um, I also did the, uh, the, the one outside uh, that I called uh, Black is Beautiful. You know, that, that on the mural too, you know, I wanted to support, um, you know, the black community. Uh, that's actually my friend. I, I've known her since uh, ninth grade. Oh, I've known right. her for a long time. We went to art school together in Alton High School. And I called her, and uh, uh, her name is Christy. So I was like, hey, you know, I have this project that I want to do. And basically the idea behind it is like, you know, I'm dark skinned too, you know, to, you know, even to like other lighter Mexicans or, you know, other, you know. <laughs> in, the Hispanic, in the Hispanic world, because, um, you know, I coach soccer. But that's the thing, though. You know, dark skin and Hispanics and light skin Hispanics. Yeah, just like in the black. It's a thing. It's a lot of. It's a thing. A lot of <laughs> yeah. the Asian community do it too. So. Yeah, and and you know, I, I I love art. I go to museums and like I don't look like anybody in the paintings. Mm. Nobody. Thanks. You know, I don't look like anybody in the paintings. And I love art, but I don't look like anybody in the in any paintings. I go to the Kimball. There's not one painting that I relate to. Not one. Even the ones that are Hispanic, they're like light skinned Hispanics. Yeah, the that's true. So, you know, it's like my daughter's dark skinned like me, you know. Uh, you know, so I, uh, you know, I wanted to do it for, um, you know, when you go to a museum and you see these glorified portraits, you think, like, wow, that person's beautiful. So then you connect with them and it builds confidence in you as a person, you know. So I wanted, you know, um, if I, my goal was that if I little girl, walked by the mural and saw somebody that looked like her, you know, a dark skinned Hispanic black uh, girl, they look like her and say, wow, like she's beautiful. So maybe I'm beautiful too. Mm. That is, that's going to give them confidence because that's the thing that I believe all races are beautiful, but other races already have that confidence. Some races don't mm. because, you know, you know, look, you know, if you look at TV, if you look at movies, if you look at all this other stuff, it's like, it is about color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, like they always say, like, why does it always have to be about it? Because it is, you know, it's, uh, if you look at even like Mexican TV and movies, you think that all Mexicans are light skinned, yeah. but because only the, they only pick the ones that, you know, they're really, really light skinned and the ones that look like me, they don't, they don't, you know, it's like, it's not. But well, do you feel there's a lot of mental conditioning? Like from the age, from, from a young age, we learn a different perspective on history and they, like you said, on the media, they paint a certain picture where they, they want to see the lighter complexion and something like that. Mm -hmm. You feel like we're conditioned from a young age to that's the things we want to see or the things we, we look forward to? Um, I think so, yeah. I, I think that people are not born racist. I think that the racism is taught. Yes. Yeah. I think it's taught. And if it can be taught, it could be untaught. So I think that anyone can, can uh, there are racists, can learn to not be racist. Yeah. And it's crazy you said that. It's a tough thing because, like, the younger generation of, you know, the uh, white generation, they 
they feel a different connection than their parents because uh, them growing up, who was the president? It was a black president, right? Yeah. Then most of their friends now that they get out and do different things with are black. So they are raised up different because they see different stuff then with the movements happening and like, oh shoot, that is wrong. You yeah. know, so it, it's, it's battling between each other with uh, the parents and now the kids are growing up and seeing different things. So you hit home when you say, you know, about your daughter walking by a pain and saying, oh, okay, she looks just like me. Now I got power. Yeah. You know, now I can do whatever I want to do because it's a person that looks just like yeah. me. Yeah, just like, just like Obama did, you know. I, you know, I like Obama. I love Obama. 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 But, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, it's like, um, it's like just having somebody there that you say like, oh, like I never, like, I never thought that I could be president, mm -hmm. you know, I will always say like that, nah, like, but like after someone goes in there and changes that, then it's like, okay, like I could do it now. It's yeah. possible. I could, it's possible, you know, regardless of the politics, you know, it's just the possibility it wasn't there before. Someone yeah. had to do it, you know, and it's crazy because it's. Like the other day I was talking to my one of my family members and they were like, yeah, you know, like, you know, we, we used to go to like a different school. It was segregated. And I was like, what? Like that was in your lifetime? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, holy crap. Like, like that's like this was a few years back when I was younger. But that was the first time that it actually hit me that I was like, wow, like, like. That wasn't that long ago. No, we're not that wasn't that long ago. We're not. We're not. And we it's still true. got a lot of work to do. It's true. We got a lot of we, work like, to do. From talking to your grandparents and you know your older aunts and stuff like that, like it's real. Yeah. Like, so then real. when people say like you know, I, um, you know, I don't, I don't think racism is a thing. You know, it's uh, you know, I don't, I don't see it. You know, uh, and I'm, and I'm just like, look, like. Like this is something. This is not something we're talking about. You know, a thousand years ago, like this, like we, there's people alive that were born and and they were segregated. Like, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, I, I, America has a lot of issues, uh, mainly because I think that you know my dad always says like when you start something wrong, it's gonna end wrong. Mm. And I believe that America was started the wrong way. Oh no, fact. And I think like, and it's hard for us because we try to make it America our home and it's hard to make it our home when it's something that uh they don't want us to be here so it's it's crazy like it's you can't even say it's our second home but it's that feeling like we grew up in america so this is our this is our home but it don't feel like this to me I, I feel like this is our home it's just at the same time people don't people need to stop laying claim to things that we can't belong in the first place Cause I mean, I'm not super religious, but a lot of people feel like this is God's land. All land is God's land at the end of the day. People lay claim to things they shouldn't claim when all land is open to be wrong. You know, we are meant to be, we are going through the COVID crisis right now, but people are meant to be sociable. We meant to roam and learn new things. It's good to go overseas. It's good to explore new surroundings, but at the same thing, you cannot lay claim to something that is not yours at the end of the day. You don't take this piece of earth with you. When you pass, you go, you go as an individual. So people need to stop laying claims to things that's not theirs and just be willing to share things. Like this land, we, we share it. It was taken from the Native Americans, but we do share it with, amongst each other. And this is my home. When somebody tells us to go back home, that's not a fact. You know, that's not, that's not something that's a factual statement. This is where, home is where the heart is. Wherever I feel like I have my love, that's my home. And to me, when people say go back home, I, I, I ignore that, because my heart is hurt. Just like one, like you said, your heart is hurt. And so it's just one of those things where the hate is not, it's not being the loudest voice in the room. And, I feel like our generation is doing a lot of work, but we still got a lot of work to go. Like you said, you was talking to some of your older family members, they lived through segregation. That's not that far away. That was just 50 years ago, things were just segregated. Well, let's say 60 or 70. It was still things were segregated. So, you know, we still got a lot of work to do. But I love the fact that you're using art to inspire people. It's, and I have a daughter. So that spoke volumes to me when you said you want your daughter to see somebody like her. That, that's, that, that hit home with me. Because, you know, that is very impactful. Art is very impactful. Yeah. So, and um, I have a question. So moving forward, you talked about things you want to do in your community, but you also gave us a little tick that wow, you almost went into law enforcement. Yeah. Do you still have thoughts of doing that at times? Um, only because, uh, well, not not really. I, I want to make change, positive change, but I feel that I could probably do more change with art than, uh, than being a police officer. But I did want to, and I respect law enforcement and what they do 
You know, it's kind of like uh, a lot of people have been saying, like, the military fell Vanessa. Like, I don't think the entire military fell Vanessa. I was out there help, uh, help, help make, bring awareness to her cause. I'm in the military. Yeah. There's a lot of people that were helping me that were in the military. There was one guy that was painting with me. He was in the Marines. He was full suited. Yeah, 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 and there was, there was a few people that stopped yeah. by, and they yeah. were in the uniform. And they were, they, were, they wanted justice just like anyone else. So, you know, um, not everybody's bad. And um, not, um, you know, so we can't, we can't judge an entire group of people for a few bad people. But I do want change. And I think that I can make that happen more with art. No, that's really, you're saying like positive change and I'm a teacher and I just seen you just grasp a teacher of art now. Yeah. So how, how's that? Yeah, um, well, I wasn't, I didn't want to really like, um, I like just doing art full time and just do my own thing. And I didn't want to get back in the schedule, but you know, it's like these kids, um, they're, they're, they're the next generation, man. Yeah. You know, they're the next generation. That's what we need to put our money at. You know, it's, uh, you, you train the next generation to be different and they're going to be different. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, um. I mean, unfortunately, a lot of people are kind of set in their ways, you know, but if you introduce people to different cultures, the arts, you know, it's, uh, you're, you're sort of like helping the future, um, you know, go towards the right direction. Uh, so I, you know, I wanted to do it. I want to, I, I like teaching art. I want everybody to learn whatever they can. You got like a, uh, what's, you got like, let see, I'm a beginner, so you need to put me before the beginner. You got like a pre-beginner class? Oh, uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna be teaching uh, four classes and they range all the way from fourth grade to 12th grade. Yeah, put me with the fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's crazy because art, uh, it, it makes the creativity come out of kids, even if they can't draw or anything like that, but just imagination and seeing that they can, you know, finish something and put different colors. The colors go with the mind as well. Uh, seeing what they can draw. And I like the outside classes or outside the school because inside the school is limited to yeah. what you can actually do. And uh, then there's restrictions too. There's restrictions. Like you just can't say, all right, kids, y'all draw uh, the movement, Black Lives uh, Matter movement. You can't say that inside the school. You know what I'm saying? They get a lot of uh, heat. So I really enjoy that. I want to come by one day and, and you know see you in action on that. And also uh, just moving on through your endeavors, uh, you picked up a tattoo gun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So let us know about that. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, one of my friends, he was like, "Hey, he owns a tattoo shop," and he was like, "Hey, you need to come work over here." And I was like, "Really?" Like, and he's like, "Yeah, man, it's a lot of money doing tats." And I was like, "Well, I, I don't know. I never thought about it." He's like, "No, you should do it. You know, it might be fun to do a tattoo every now and then." So I went and bought a machine, and I'm gonna start. Uh, I believe. Sunday, I'm gonna do my first tattoo. Oh. So from there, like, you know, it's just, I like to stay busy, man. You know, like uh, art, you know, I've always told people when they ask me like, you know, how could I be a successful artist? I'm like, well, I, I don't know. Cause I don't consider myself a successful artist, but I know you need to stay busy and art, it comes in seasons, you know, murals, those are more of a summer thing. Mm -hmm. In winter, nobody's doing murals. So it's too cold. <laughs> yeah, so, you, you know, so then, you know, if you, if you do paintings, then you can do that in the winter, in winter and then you yeah. can do murals, Thanks. you know, uh, on the on the summer and then you can do tattoos every now and then and you can do some digital art and you, eventually you stay busy all year long instead of waiting around for uh, the next mural job to come hit you, instead of waiting around for the next time somebody buy your painting. So it's something that I want to do, just kind of stay busy. You know, I like learning and uh, I'm always up to learning a lot of stuff. Like a lot of people don't know that like I can like I can lay down tile, like I can, I can weld. I'm a welder, oh. you know, I'm an electrician. Uh, you know, I can repair, I'm a mechanic. I can take an engine out of a car and fix it and put I'm it back. I'm a jack of all trades. I just, I like learning, you know, Man, I like that's learning. Good. I like learning, I like working my hands. You can't limit your mind. Nope. That, that, that's one thing people are like, I only do this. Nah, you can do much more. And do you think you got an advantage in the tattoo game just because you, uh, you, you do like, uh, you know, paintings and stuff like that, because it's a difference between a tattoo artist, you know, and a, a person that paints and stuff. So do you think you have an advantage at the, is that? I don't know. Um, I, um, I, know, I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, to me, I just wanted to do it to hang out with other artists, to be honest with you. 
because there's a lot of like you know you're at the shop you're talking art with other artists so it's something that just, you know i want to do just be around art talk to other artists yeah. I, I like that you got that like that sponge mentality you always absorb a little knowledge from people and i like that and you apply it to your own mental okay, now, i'm just saying because a lot of tattoo artists they really can't draw they got the, they got the computer where they can put it in and you but they can but they can tap yeah, like, you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, so yeah. Trace. It's, it's a huge, it's, trace, yeah, it's a huge trace, difference. Trace. That's why I asked that. It's a huge difference. I could do that. Hey, I used to get them Dragon Balls. They trace books. I might, I might have a career. I'm about to hit you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we touched on a lot of, we, t- we kind of touched on the political, touched on a lot of serious topic. But uh, let's get more on the laid back thing. Football coming back. You know, are you are you in the sports at all? I like the Cowboys. Okay, all right. That's about it. So, with COVID and everything, yeah. Do you think the Cowboys got a chance this year? Um, I think everybody wrongly believes that who's a Cowboys fan. <laughs> <laughs> Not even if we got a good squad this year. I mean, I would like to see the Cowboys win a Super Bowl before I die. Man, I've been saying it. See, it'd be the diehard Cowboy fans like him that give us a, a bad rep because they think we can win it every year. <laughs> no, it'd be the fans like you that pretend to like the team. Then when we do good, you all on the, on the bandwagon. He hates that. He hates that. But as I, soon I as that starts, hate that. It's just I'm more realistic with that. Y'all think he's a top three quarterback? Top ten. But, but I'm more I said he's seven or eight. That's I'm, another discussion. I'm, I'm Where do you think he falls in the top in the hierarchy of quarterbacks? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we have enough data. Uh, I, don't <laughs> yeah, you have data. Uh, I don't know. There's, you know, I don't know. You see, my thing about Thank that you, is boy. he gave Thank you four you. years with Jason Garrett and still shine here and there. Everybody know what Jason Garrett gonna bring. So the Rumble can speak to that. Eight and eight. I would say though, um, so I got to meet Jalen Smith. Oh, cool. How was that? Um, man, okay, so that guy is one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. Like like super nice. So I, I went I actually went to his house for two days. Oh, cool. I, I got to paint a mural in his in, in his house. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. For those so, that don't know, Jalen Smith is a linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys here, right? Yeah. Don't know. And um I got to meet a few of the other cowboys there. Uh, they were at his house, and but Jalen Smith, that guy was super nice, and you know he definitely like, you know, I have big dreams for me, and I always say you know like whenever I uh, I become famous, I want to treat everybody with respect, treat them like, like, like we're the same. You yeah. know, I, you gotta look people in the eye and say you know we're the same. You mm-hmm. know, make you feel like, not make somebody feel less than you. Yeah, I'm like, not better than you. Yeah, and yeah. he's definitely like that role model for me because he made me feel like. We were the same, and mm-hmm. he was super nice. So I have nothing but nice things to say about Jalen Smith. So what did you make for him? Who was on the mirror? Um, so I, I did um like a you know um, uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, into that. He got the yeah. good. He got Hain. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's kind of all we talked about: Avatar: The Last Airbender. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> you, get, you like Korra? I wasn't that big of a fan of Korra. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mainly Ang, yeah, and yeah, uh, you OG. know. Yeah, Suko, I like Suko, but I was trying to paint him in this wall, and he's like, nah, man, I don't want no Suko in my wall. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm all about Avatar. Uh, I'm, I'm all about Aang. And I was like, all right. You know? it should, it should, it was, no, Zuko had one of them good redemption arcs, man. He yeah, showed, I know. He showed I, yeah, I know. I, I like I like that character. Rhea's last I, I don't know what they're talking about. I, I don't know. Last, <laughs> Avatar Last Airbender was a big cartoon when he was key. I was just shaking my head like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. I grew yeah, up watching it. The, the character Zuko he talked about was a character that was trying to hunt down the main character and kill him. But they end up becoming best friends. Like he, the movie. Yeah, he changed completely. Oh, I didn't watch that whack ass movie. No, no, I so, walked out of it. I, that that yeah. movie was one of the worst movies ever made. You yeah. shouldn't waste your time. Well, what other creative stuff you can say? Oh, let's say this. What is the weirdest thing you ever did? Mural wise painting, like what's the weirdest? Oh. Don't tell us you didn't want them live portraits. <laughs> um I don't know. I I just I just started doing murals about Four and a half months ago. Oh, mm-hmm. and you already this good at it. So I just, um, I haven't been doing it for a long time. Not a long time. I for just, seeing your artwork, you would not think that. For um, seeing your artwork, you would not think that. First off, what do you do before you start painting? Like, what's the designs you do? Like, do they help you? Like, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like, before you start, you do like uh, shapes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's called like a doodle technique. That's what they call it. Um, Basically, you draw doodles on the wall. You take the photo you're gonna paint, put it on top of it in a like 
Photoshop or Procreate, and you make that uh, the portraits transparent, mm -hmm. so then you're able to see the shapes underneath the face. So then you use the shapes to guide you where you need to put your lines. Mm. Oh my god! So it's like a way to like uh, yeah. So I mean that technique's been been around for a while, but um, you know uh, uh, some people just require someone to actually show you how it works. So it's been around for a while, but um, I I uh, I try to find like YouTube videos where they explained it, and they sort of did. But I figure like uh, if I go out, I met a few of the local artists from around the area. And I've taken them out and I'm like, this is how you do it. This is how you do it in the program. You know, somebody's showing you and doing it. It's, it's a lot better than just watching a video. That's respect, man. The fact that you're taking your hard lessons and giving it to people. That, that's beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful. I, I, you know, I want everybody to get good. You know, I, I, I want to share knowledge. You know, it's all about collaboration. It's not about competition. And, you know, I had a lot of people that ask me that, like, you know, why do you, why are you showing people how you do everything? Like, Cause I do, like I literally do show people how to do everything. I've had people that say like, hey, how do you do this? I'm like, come on my studio. I'll show you how to do it right now. Hey, you know, how do I do that? Come over, I'll show you right now. And you know, I, I when I started my art career, a lot of artists, they, they want to tell you. Yeah. They don't want to tell you, they're insecure. You know, they don't want to tell you. They want to be the only ones that know how to do it. See, and it, stuff it like that. They don't want to help you. But the way I see it, you know, and this is a Dragon Ball C reference. I always tell people like, Look, I'm like Vegeta. I need Goku's around to help me. <laughs> I need Goku's around to help me to get to my next Super Saiyan level. Yeah, yeah nah, you know what straight. I mean? The straight. segue, did you keep up with it still, DBZ? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Vegeta that caught up, he, he's stronger than Goku. Now. Exactly, so exactly. I'm so, lost again. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but the thing is, I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, but I haven't kept up with it. So right now, at this current arc, Because it, it, fell off, it fell off for a little bit. But it's, it's okay right now. Like yeah. I said, Vegeta's now stronger than Goku. So he, he hit that level of you know, being the person he wanted to be stronger. I like Vegeta. He, he himself. I got his edge up at times, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, need, I need that. I need motivation. I see somebody, and it, they're better than me, and give me time, and I'll get there. Yeah. Like, I just... That's... I'm loving these anime references, though. You yeah, yeah, hard, yeah. I'm, then, a, I'm a Vegeta. Like, you know, showing people different stuff is part of giving back. Yeah. Like, so for our people out there, it's limited or not limited, but you know, keep things to themselves. Don't want to help people. You have to, man. Like, don't be scared of somebody. You know, outdoing you. That's how we all get better. Yeah. For sure. And I always tell people when they, you know, they're like, "Well, how much are you charging for a class?" I always tell them, "Just pay it forward, man. One day when you become a really successful artist." You see, like a new artist come ask you for help, just help them, and then consider my favor to you repaid. I like that. Well, we know you're a very busy man, man. We don't want to take too much of your time. Is there anything you want to let? Like, I know you was talking about the mural this weekend. It's July seventeenth for those who are watching the video. So don't show up next week looking for this uh, weekend mural. <laughs> Any events you want to tell the people about before we get up out of here? Yeah. Um, well, I I got the um, uh, you know the Black Lives Matter uh, mural that I'm gonna do in Fort Worth. And um, I'm planning another big project that I'm calling like Justice Wall, but I'm not sure what's gonna happen with that. I've gotten a lot of bad feedback about it. But you're not deterred. You're no, still no, going no, for it. no. Yeah, I'm still going for it. I just, I just don't want to divide. I don't want to cause a group of people to show up to protest, and then there's a riot, and yeah. it's like that's not what I want, man. I don't want my city to hate more. You know, I want my city to come together. I want to promote unity from everybody. So, you know, I need to figure out a way to do that. And I know I can and I will, but I, at the moment, I'm still thinking about it. Can you tell the people, you know, where to find you, your, your uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you got? Yeah, um, so on Facebook, I'm under uh, Juan Velasquez, and I also have a page, uh, Velasquez Forward Art on Facebook. And on Instagram, I'm under Velasquez underscore art underscore. One more time for the people. One more time. Um, <laughs> One more time. Uh, Facebook, uh, my page, uh, my uh, I'm under Juan Velasquez. And I have an art page on Facebook, Velasquez Fort Worth Art. And on Instagram, I'm under Velasquez underscore art underscore. Well, thank you so much, Juan. We like to uh, say... Uh, we really appreciate you sitting down with us, telling your story, telling your passion, telling everything about yourself. 
and uh, I had fun. I had fun. I learned a lot too. I'm gonna give me a pre uh, that pre uh, pregina glass with that artwork. <laughs> yeah, I need I need one to do me a paint too. We're gonna talk about that off camera though. I wanna do a portrait with me like not, not with the body I got, but like one of the Greek god bodies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll put get your there. head on it. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. But you know the name, you know the game. I'm Brian Titus with Red Richardson. And this is straight, straight up. up. Shout out for the culture one more time, man. Thank you.